on that thing. Ah, my beanbag. Um, is that rolling? I think so. First step towards infestation. Cool car. Okay, um, I just, I was just looking back at that my match and it was Shadow of Eyes that what happened to Wall of Illusion. I completely missed it. I was, I, that, the last two duels that we have had, the two duels that we have had today have been absolutely insane. And now we have Becca going up against Rex Raptor. And the question I was going to ask, is three duels a day too much? With uh, all the other channels that people would watch as well. I like watching Gotham Chess. I like watching Sidemen. I like watching... Uh, I like watching geography videos. I've watched a little bit of everything, to be honest. Give me a topic. I will probably tell you something about it that I've watched or seen. Or Okay, Raptor straight out the box with... Wasteland and raise body heat 2100 and that will get rid of Spirit of the Harp. We've seen what that did earlier in this uh, If you want to see Spirit of the Harp's ultimate powers go watch Taya and Bones There's performance of sword Taya's uh, sorry Rebecca has got two bubonic vermin in her hand Which is unfortunate because you need them in the deck if you want to utilize their effects And Invigoration now by Raptor. Two 2100 straight off the bat. Not expecting this from Rex Raptor. This has been the most unexpected day of duels we have ever seen. All right, another Bubonic Vermin has come to the field. They're both gonna be destroyed and Becca has nothing. Well, this could be one of the quickest matches we have seen out of Becca. Oh, Mega Morph. That's interesting. Down goes another Bubonic Vermin. And, ooh, I tell you what, this one's, it's looking very dicey for Becca. All right, well, she can't activate that flip effect again. All three of them are in the graveyard. 2100 from Crawling Dragon, and Becca's down to 5900, so. Imagine if she lost to Rex Raptor. You know what, the way this day has been, it could happen. There's Skelengle. So Skelengle will allow Becca to draw another card. When it's flipped up. And Raptor face down. And now Little D, which will be 1300 itself. All right, Yurubi goes in for an attack. Skalengul flips up. Bruh. Bruh, nah, come on. Cot, you have got to be kidding me. You have... You have actually got to be kidding me, right? With all the... With everything that we've talked about with this card... We have not just seen this again. There's another Skalengul for Becca as well. There goes Dark Hole. <laughs> what is going on today? This has been incredible. All right, Skalengul is set face down. Doesn't go for an attack. With Becca, you really want to activate that effect. She's getting low on points as well. All right, what's Rex got? Oh, okay. Nothing to play. There's Supply Squad. And Becca content. She doesn't want to go attacking with Skalengul. Only a 900, and she hasn't got a lot of points to play with compared to Raptors. So another face down spell or trap from Raptor. And to the end phase again. Wow. No monsters to play there, Raptor. And, oh, okay. She's decided to summon Sangan. Still electing to keep a defense, though, of Skalengul. I guess with Sangan, you can pull another card if it's destroyed. I don't know, maybe Becky could have been attacking with Skalengul. You could still activate its flip effect, though. Oh, here we go, two out of King Rex.
to 1800. So Rex did have something. In, oh, actually, I think he might have just drawn that King, that King Rex. Oh, okay. Tactical move from Raptor. He's decided not to destroy the Sangan that's in attack mode. To prevent the effect of Sangan being activated, Becca can pull good cards out of her deck. And she's just drawn Dark Core as well. Unfortunately for Raptor, Rebecca has just drawn Millennium Shield. Now she could activate Megamorph on Sangan, but why would you? Only get to 2000, so Millennium Shield has just been played. And she's gone with Stuffed Animal, so Stuffed Animal could be could be put on with um, Megamorph. Oh god, with Megamorph. Oh. Note to self: Don't play GTA games, especially GTA London One or Two, before doing Yu-Gi-Oh, because London absolutely cooked me. It's not a bad game if you grew up with it, which I did. It's, uh... Oh, there's Witch of the Black Forest again. And down goes Stuffed Animal. Rebecca's Teddy. And she does have Megamorph, and she's gone for it. So this will put Teddy at 2400 until Becca's life points go under um, Rex Raptors. Very good card, Megamorph, if you play it right. All right, over to Raptor again. And... Nah, bro, so someone's playing me. They can't be because this... I kid you not, this is completely AI, completely RNG. And we have just seen another dark hole come and sweep the field at the perfect possible time. It's like... It's like the game knows. It's almost not a surprise anymore. The heart of the cards does not discriminate. It is available for every duelist, even the evil ones. All right. Becca plays... She's played Witch of the Black Forest. Raptor must have high-level monsters in his hand because he's not putting many down. It's another 1,100 off of him. Becca's got to be careful of her life points, though. Although Raptors are starting to trickle down as well. All right, Raptor needs something in response, and he's played a Fissure. That's a desperation move. You wouldn't usually play a Fissure on a Witch of the Black Forest. And she does have Hysteric Fairy. And she's going to pull him. Hysteric Fairy, so 1800 attacker. Supply Squad, and there's card destruction as well. And Oh, she plays two out of King Rex. All right, so that'll get to 1,800. Raptor is going straight for life points. That's why he got um, Witch of the Black Forest off. He wants this battle done. Unfortunately for Raptor, Trap Hole of Spikes has just been activated. And that is going to remove 2 out of King Rex. And Raptor takes a chunk of life point damage. So Raptor there was going for the 1,800 hit, which would only leave Becker with 700. That puts 7 Tools of Bandit. 7 Tools of the Bandit out of Becker's reach. She wouldn't be able to play it because you need a thousand life points to activate it. And oh, Raptor's flipped up a trap hole. Becca has flipped up seven tools of the bandit, speak of the devil. If Raptor had hit that two headed King Rex attack, he had a trap hole waiting for any monster that would have been played, and Becca would not have been able to activate seven tools of the bandit. Absolute chaos. They're both to 1500. This might be the single best day of duels that this channel has ever had. In fact, I think it is, by far. The matches that we've seen, and the one that we're seeing right now, have just been incredible. As, oh my god, there's a new Kazi. 700 life points for Becca. Raptor doesn't play anything. He's, he must only have high-level monsters. Again, I will check. I will call out as, oh no, we're going to get to see him. There's card destruction. Oh, they all were high-level monsters. Sword Arm of Dragon. I think there were two of them. And Mega Zowla. Down goes Trap Hole. Becca's... She's got it. She throws down cards just in case. Down goes a Witch of the Black Forest. 
Raptor, if you can't block, it's over, and I don't think you'll be able to. And there it is. Becker picks up the first win. 23 turns. What a, what a game. Once again, what a duel. So that was only the first one. So we'll go to round two. Raptor will have to win two in a row against Becker. That's Bujingi Centipede. All right, here we go. Match number two. Becker's picked Bubonic Vermin, a stuffed animal. There is a Magic Jammer and Skalengle was just played. She's got three of them in her deck, Skalengle. Three Bubonic Vermin. She's only got one stuffed animal. She, she was only carrying around one teddy bear. Okay, face down, Spell or Trap from Raptor. Another face down spell or trap from Raptor. Another face down spell or trap from Raptor. Another face down spell or trap from Raptor. And end phase. Oh my god, has Raptor bricked? Oh, that'd be a shame if he has. It'd be a real shame if he has. Alright, stuffed animal. Was played. Oh! May have been a mistake there. Probably could have played Skalingle up. Flipped it up, got a draw, went into attack. Maybe a little bit of concern about all those face downs. There's little D. And D spell. I get the feeling that Raptor has drawn an absolute rotter. And Becker should probably go in for an attack. Ooh, Magic Jammer. So why has he played Little D face up? He's... Oh, rushed recklessly. Wait, why would you play that if you just saw Magic Jammer? Unless Raptor's got something cooking in his hand, he spent a little bit of time looking at his cards. Becker has just thrown away card destruction. Well, interesting from Raptor. It'll be interesting to see if he has counterplay. He goes for that face down. There goes Skalengle. Raptor could be down another 900 points, but I would say would 900 points change the game, but in theory, yes. Yes, it absolutely would, but too late now. There's Morphing Jar. And she sets Bubonic Vermin again. Again, reluctant to attack with the 900s. Raptor could be down another 1,800 points. He could be down to, what, 4,900, potentially, but is still the human player. They aren't thinking like AI as... Oh, Monster Reborn. Well, that won't do much. She brings back Little D. Well, I guess um, that would be why Raptor played... That'd be why Raptor played Rush Recklessly. So the Magic Jammer wouldn't get used on Monster Reborn, and Raptor has just got Sword Arm of Dragon. There goes Stop Defense. Bubonic Vermin is flipped up. And face down, another Bubonic Vermin, but now with a Sword Arm of Dragon on the field. So Becker taking some advantage here. Raptor has drawn all over the place with his cards here. Alright, Stuffed Animal is destroyed, and Raptor really should be down more life points. Becker's deck, though, isn't always tuned for attacking, so... Oh, there's Megamorph. Summons are in attack mode. Okay, we are seeing... Okay, Bubonic Vermin back to defense. Sangin's been played in attack mode, and... Becca has decided to attack it. So she's going to flush some points. But she'll be able to get the effect of Sangin to activate and pulls a Witch of the Black Forest. Now, Witch of the Black Forest can be used to get Shadow Ghoul, so that might be what Becca's going for here.
with Sangun. She could have also pulled um, Hysteric Fairy as well. But there is a Megamorph in her hand. There's seven tools of the bandit, useful card. And again, going for the attack. Well, this is risky. She is up a game, so she can take a few risks, I guess. She's just sacrificed a Witch of the Black Forest. Sorry, I might have got that the wrong way around. You can't get, um, you can't get Hysteric Fairy with Sangin. You can get it with Witch of the Black Forest. And there it is. It's an 1800 attacker, and she does have Megamorph. All right, draw for Rex. Puts a card face down. And going for a tribute. And Tomazaurus has been swapped out for Mega Zowler. 1800, so... Megamorph is in hand. Raptor wouldn't know that. Bubonic Vermin has just been flipped up, so the effect of that will activate. And she'll be able to pull another one. I love how they call it bubonic vermin in reference to the bubonic plague. It's only in the 1300s. Maybe I can make a 1300s themed deck. Bruh, this is getting... I, you were kidding me. She's pulled Dark Hole again. Nah, this is... Nah, that, that bear who commented saying that, was it... It was Jason, Mecha Jason, saying that teddy bear is putting the dark hole on top of her deck whenever she wants it. And there's trap hole from Raptor. And Becca has just played seven tools of the bandit. This is absolutely, this is absolute madness. So Becca's just got Hysteric Fairy. She can equip it with Megamorph. She's thinking about it, but she hasn't. Okay, interesting. If she does attack with Hysteric Fairy with Megamorph, she will only be able to use it for one turn because Raptor's life points are now um, lower that than Beckett. So she's decided to hold Megamorph, maybe to use it at a uh, at a more convenient time or a more opportune moment. You always got to wait for the opportune moment, as Jack Sparrow would say. And she sets Megamorph, and down goes. Morphing Jar. Becca sets her whole hand down, so... A little bit of a... Uh, if you're uh, if you're smart to a deck, a little bit of a giveaway that she may be going for a... for a Fiber Jar. Fiber Jar. Uh, morphing Jar. Has anyone... I actually have Fiber Jar on card. When that's flipped up, all the graveyard cards and all the cards on the field go into the deck, you shuffle, and you restart. It's almost like restarting the duel just without a life point correction. It's like an absolute troll car. I think it's banned though, uh, Fiber Jar. As Skalengal goes down. And Morphing Jar is flipped up. Neither player has any cards in their hand. So both players are gonna draw five cards and not lose anything. Uh, that might be the first time I've ever seen a Morphing Jar used on two empty hands. But we are, we are seeing absolute anarchy. This is absolute like, what is happening today on this Yu-Gi-Oh game? There goes Mammoth Graveyard, and now Morphing Jar will get a direct attack. I, just, I can't believe what we have seen today. You're kidding. Raptor has just pulled a dark hole of his own in that, in that drawer of five. Well, a draw of five cards is a little bit more reasonable. And there goes Invigoration as well. That is a 2,000 attacker that is now coming after Becca. She, she does have Negate attack. What's she doing? Well, there is a monster reborn in her hand. She's decided to hold a negate attack. Having a look through the graveyard, what's she looking for? Oh, Sangan. She's looking for Sangan. 
Oh my god, I see what she's doing. I see it, she's gonna use polymerization. She's gonna use the effect of Sangin and Witch of the Black Forest because they're both on the field and they're both being removed. Becca's got a polymerization in hand. She could use the effect of Witch of the Black Forest and Sangin to pull another Sangin and another Witch of the Black Forest. I think that's what she's going for. She is. Oh my god, that is completely broken. She's going to be able to fuse them again. It's a special summon. She's going to use polymerization twice and she's going to fuse two sandwiches together. Bro, what, what is even happening? That sounds like sandwich as well. I'm hungry now. I want food. I want a sandwich. Actually, I lie. I want KFC. Or McDonald's or something. She's... Oh, she's still got Mega Morph as well. Oh my god, Sandwich is going to get to 4,200 attack points. Does Raptor have enough life points to survive this? He's got a 2,000 attacker on the field. He would have felt safe. That's 2,200. And now 2,100 on Sandwich. Oh my god. Rex Raptor is now down to 600 life points. Sandwich goes down to 10,050 and she's got negate attack on the field. She can't be attacked. That's why she held it. That is, this is nuts. Raptor should already be beaten. Rap, uh, Becca should have attacked him earlier. This is absolutely insane. There's Skullangle. Raptor's cooked. He's not going to be able to... He doesn't have a 2,100 defense. It's Wish... Twin... Uh, it's Twin-Headed Thunder Dragon off Wish.com. And Sandwich has just finished Raptor off. That was absolutely incredible. Wow. Okay. Becca defeats Raptor. She is... Oh, she is absolutely cruising in her quest to become Duelist Kingdom... Champion, these the three matches that we have seen today have been absolutely insane. This is this is exactly the reason why I wanted to create this series to see this absolute anarchy unfold. Well, that's all for me today. I'm absolutely exhausted after that. My mouth is bone dry. I'm hungry. I want. I really should stop eating so much fast food, as well. Um, thanks everyone for tuning in wherever you are in the world. Stay safe. Take care. Oh, and also thanks everyone for leaving all the comments as well. I had a lot, a lot of comments. Really gives me the inspiration to keep the series going as well for many, many years to come, I reckon I will do this for. So thanks everyone for the support. Take care, stay safe, farewell.